Good morning student, it's good to be back once again. Last class we have started with chapter 13. That is we have completed some topic and the rest of the topic will be learning today. Okay, so our topic of discussion today is election campaign point number one pooling and counting of votes uh, topic two measures taken to ensure free and fair election that is the topic three and the last topic is challenges to free and fair elections okay so these are basically the four important topic that we'll be learning today in this class all right so the aim for our class okay so that is the aim of our today class so at the end of this lesson you will be able to gain basic knowledge of how elections are done and why it become necessary in a democracy all right so th that is our aim to achieve okay at the end of our discussions all right so how election campaign are done so this is a question for you okay so how election campaign are done all right so uh, okay i'll just give you some time to think okay so how election campaign are done Okay, now I hope you have at least some basic knowledge of how election campaign are done. Okay, and I'm, it's not a new concept for all of us. Okay, so in a democratic countries, election become a election is very much necessary. Okay, all right, because leaders they don't elect themselves; it is the general public which elect the leaders. Okay, that is who vote for the candidate. So the candidate what do they do they go for elect uh, election campaign okay they go to different places different wards different villages that is asking for the votes okay so they will go and visit places all right so that is how they go for election campaign and then see uh door they sometimes even go to door to door campaign okay so they used to visit each and every individual household but that is not allowed until it is 48 hours okay that is before 48 hours before the pooling starts so before the actual election take place they, they are not allowed to visit okay that is within 48 hours so their door-to-door -door canvassing is allowed till 48 hours okay that is before the pooling starts so candidates ma make their promises through their election manifesto so whenever the the candidate they go for election campaign what do they do they promises certain things that they will do for their people or for their particular society or for the particular area or for the particular region okay under which they are contesting so that is how they go for election campaign okay mainly to mainly to gain people's support okay because of that reason they go for election campaign so see there are certain restriction okay even though if they go for election campaign there are certain restriction that is imposed on how election campaign are run all right so the point number one is votes cannot be sought by an appeal to religions or caste sentiment of the voters and then returns showing details of and expenses incurred in connection with the election campaign have to be submitted to the election commission after the election so after the election the candidate they have to submit how much amount of money they have spent okay that is to the election commissions and then these expenses like how much money they have spent okay including all the expenses have to be within the limit set by the election commission which means they can they, they cannot spend more than more money than what up to certain specific amount that is fixed by the election commission all right so point number three is the government resources cannot be used for election campaign okay so any things that belongs to the government the candidate they cannot use for election campaign and the last point is candidates cannot bribe or threaten voters to vote for them which means the candidate they cannot okay they cannot force somebody to vote for them okay so these are the norms 
all right the rules or the regulation which the candidates they must, they must abide by it okay which is framed by the election commissions and to get more additional knowledge you can even go through your textbook under the page number 185 okay you'll even find in page number 185 all right pooling and counting of votes so uh, another topic of discussion today is the pooling and counting of votes like how pooling and counting of votes take place all right so basically we have learned that uh, before before the introduction of EVM that is electronic voting machine okay Be before the introduction of EVM people they vote through ballot paper as we have learned how is ballot paper so they will start counting the vote okay so that is through hand counting okay all right so they will cut the number of vote according to the receipt that they have received okay in the through the ballot paper all right according to the individuals they will count each and every ballot paper okay and then from there they will record the particular vote but after the introduction of the evm counting of vote become a little bit not a little bit but it became much more easier comparing to the traditional method all right because everything that uh, it is already the data is already recorded in the machine so when counting it become very easy simply they will okay the result itself is already in the machine so they will compile all the resources okay the data and then final final election result is declared by collecting all the by collecting all the data okay from each and every uh, okay the evm electronic voting machines all right under which data are stored so because of that reason counting of votes become very easy so the last stage of an election is the day when the voter cast or pull their votes all right so that is the last stage of election okay that is when the voter cast or pull their votes so every voter whose name is in the voter list goes to the nearest polling booth to cast their to class to cast his or her vote okay so polling booths are usually situated in a local school so as you can see whenever there is an elections you will see the polling booth uh, either in a local school or government offices okay so the election official identified them put a mark on the fingers and allow voters to cast their vote okay so they will give you a mark on your finger and then you enter the pool and then you from there you cast your vote so also a ballot paper is a sheet of paper on which the contesting candidates and their party names and symbol are listed okay so nowadays electronic voting machine like i told you nowadays electronic voting machines are used to record vote instead of the ballot paper okay so the machines shows the name of candidates and party symbols so the independent candidates are also allowed their symbol by election officials so that the voters have to just press the button against the candidate okay whom they want to vote all right so whom they want to vote the what the voters they simply have to press that particular button okay so from there they will just cast their vote which party they are voting and then see when all the evn when all the EVM, that is electronic voting machines, are secured, they are open in the presence of agents of the candidates. Okay, they are not just randomly open. Okay, they have to open what in the presence or in the presence of all the agents of the candidates on the day of the counting. All right, that is on the day of counting, the EVM, the machine, they will open in the presence. Okay, in the presence of all the agents of the candidate. So the results are declared when counting is over. Okay, when count the moment the counting is over, the result will be declared. All right. So the candidate securing the highest number of votes from a constituency is declared the winner. Which means, okay, uh, the out of hundred, suppose a can uh, okay, out of hundred two two candidates are contesting in an election. Okay, so the one securing fifty one out of hundred will declare winner. Okay, all right. So the results are a big event and covered by the media. All right, the media means they will be telecast in television, radio, as well as in newspapers. Okay. So when all the results are declared, it becomes clear as to whom who, as to who will form the next government. 
which means majority uh, winning party they will be the ruling party okay so candidate who failed to secure a minimum percentage of votes pull forfeit their security deposit all right so that is all about pulling and counting of votes so next topic of discussion is the measure okay some of the measures taken to ensure free and fair elections see from barely bail out to pick up and drop facilities how 2019 Lok Sabha election are all about inclusion all about inclusion means as you can also see from the given picture see this is a physically challenged person okay but still then inclusion means everybody is included okay regardless of whether you are a girl you are a boy whether you are physically handicapped whether you are if you have the right to vote okay if you are 18 years and above according to the universal adult franchise you have every right to can a vote okay you have every right to give your vote all right so election is all about inclusion okay it's, it's all about inclusion all right so see some of the measures taken to ensure free and fair election are see allegation the biggest allegation is see every after every election allegation against each other are made by all the parties newspaper and television refer to this allegation so the biggest allegation is of region okay so allegation refer to inclusion of false name in the voter list or that genuine names are not included in the list and the other one is like the ruling party is accused of using government facilities and officials and the another one is like rich candidate use their money power to win elections that is very common and the voters are intimidated by the use of muscle power and are prevented from voting that is rigging take place by people using unfair and illegal means to win okay because of all these things that arises in elections measures have to taken okay have to be taken that is to ensure that free and fair election will take place all right so th this is an analysis of data okay how the top three parties fear in 2014 and 2019 election so as you can also see from the parties okay bgp reserve seat won in 2014 okay that is 67 40 by sc shadow cast 27 by shadow tribe okay and the countries 12 out of the 12 they were like seven from shadow cast and five from shadow crap and then tmc out of 12 10 were won by the sc shadow cast and two were won by the st shadow cast uh, shadow tribe and then this is according to the reserve constituency of 2019 okay so this is a data comparison between 2014 and 2019 according to the uh okay how the top three parties they have fear in 2009 and 2000 uh, 2014 and 2019 election okay so independent election commissions so what is independent election commissions so in india election are conducted by an independent and powerful autonomous election commission okay and the president of india appointing the chief election commission that is cec okay and two other election commissioner for a six years of period and another one is it enjoys the same kind of independence that the judiciary enjoys but once appointed the election commission is not answerable to the president or government the last one is even if the ruling party or the government does not like what commission does it is impossible for to remove for them to remove the cee and then cec and they need to obey so the independent election commission okay this is also a particular body okay like the judiciary all right so under the election commission they will elect the chief election commissioner okay who will look who along with some of his colleague they will look after the election procedure in the country all right and also not only that they they enjoy certain freedoms okay they enjoy certain freedoms independent freedoms like that of the judiciary like that of the okay the judges in the supreme court and the high court okay so that's it and now coming back to our last topic that is people participation okay 
people participation how people participate in election that is true mass level popular participation so people participation is all about people participating in the election okay so people participation in election is usually measured by voter turnout figures right turnout indicates the percentage of eligible voters who actually cast their vote in the last 50 years the turnout in europe and north america has declined all right has declined means has gone down okay in india the turnout has either has either remained stable or actually gone up all right according to the population that we have okay all right so in india illiterate poor and underprivileged people vote in larger portion as compared to rich and privileged section okay so in india in India, illiterate means people who cannot read and write, okay? Poor and underprivileged people has larger portion, okay? Means like has more voter comparing to that of rich and privileged section. So this is a contrast to compare with Western countries. In the US, the poor, the Afro-Americans and the Hispanics vote much less than the rich and the white people. So it is, okay, in contrast in the sense like if you compare the okay the election process of the u.s with india we are opposite to one another okay out there okay the rich the rich people they have more vote okay comparing to that of the poor people but out here in india the poor people they have more votes comparing to that of the rich people so the, some of the challenges of free and fair election so what are some of the challenges to free and fair election in india so let's see candidates and parties these are some of the points okay point one two three four and five there are five points out here okay so point one is candidates and party with lots of money may not be sure of the victory but they do enjoy a big and unfair advantage over smaller parties and independents. so that is the major problems under the challenges of free and fair election and point number two is in some parts of the country candidates with criminal connection have been able to push others out of the electoral race and to secure the ticket from major parties so that is another challenges and point number three is some families uh, rent to dominate political parties tickets are distributed to relative from these families so that is another challenges point number four very often election offer little choice to ordinary citizens for both the major parties are quite similar to each other both in politics uh, policies and practice and the last one is smaller parties and independent candidates suffer a huge disadvantage compared to bigger parties all right so in india the challenges is nothing new to india okay why because see uh okay parties which are okay parties which are much which have mass participation all right who have who have access to resources who have access to money who have access to all right political power who has access to connection of people they have okay another advantage comparing to the lesser lesser popular political party okay so uh, election is actually not a fair and a free and fair election okay election is actually not a free and fair election why because they use means and method which is actually not according to the rules and regulation as framed by the election commissions right because of that reason there are lots of challenges to free and fair election especially in india all right so now this is a things to do your homework for today okay so what you have to do is you have to fill in the following table with information on the various representative from from nagaland okay so one is true state government and another one is true uh okay central government all right all right so there are two column out here okay this is actually for central and this is for state government all right so see which political parties is are currently in power in central government you have to fill here here okay and instead you have to fill here likewise who name who okay that is the name is the current representative from your area so from central and from state okay all right if you can't find here then you just have to fill up here okay for this which political parties currently form the opposition when when were last election held in your state which means talking about our state government nagaland and if you are from different state you can even indicate here how many women representative are there that is from your state okay you have to indicate here okay all right so very simple so this is a work for you to do 
and then please be sincere in doing your work for that also you can even you will even find in page number 191 okay for this you will even find in page number 191 so you can even refer to your textbook all right thank you all stay safe i'll see you in the next video